is someone that is terminally ill with heavy medication, to what extent we keep praying and believing God for a miracle or we come to a place where I said, okay, we're going to prepare for death? Well, I have uh, on two or three occasions, the Lord spoke to me before the person died that he was going to take them home. And so I couldn't pray for their healing anymore um, because he, he had, uh, one needed to be actually released in prayer. She was uh, the mother of a secretary of mine. And uh, she had been in uh, very bad shape for a long time. And I went in to pray for her. And when I went to pray for her, I felt I was supposed to release her. Hmm. And uh, she wasn't going to be healed. So you just obey God. So here's, here's the way I... Here's the way I approach it. Every sickness needs to be healed unless he says otherwise. Mm. I don't need his direction to pray for the sick. I need his direction to not pray. Oh, that's good. And then secondly, is do we pray until they die? Mm. And then we pray for them to be raised. <laughs> okay. Amen. And and we have prayed we have prayed uh, for five days over a little girl that died. And we stayed together, we prayed, we met night after night after night as a church, hours and hours on end, praying, interceding for her resurrection. She didn't raise. So we celebrated her life, and uh, we, we, we stopped praying when we buried her. Okay. But we knew in our heart that we had done everything that we could do. And because of that, it wasn't a depressing thing. We knew that we didn't fall short of what God was looking for. Mm. We did everything we knew to do for that child to be raised from the dead. And she, she wasn't. And so we give her to Jesus and we move on with life. But that's that's our approach. Our approach is we pray till they die. And if they die, we pray for resurrection. <laughs> And if the family wants us to continue praying, we will continue praying. If they say we're going to bury him, then we say, fine, then we will celebrate their life with you. But, uh, but we, we, honestly, we take our lead from the family, from the individual. Right. Pastor, let me ask you this. Someone that is diagnosed with terminal illness and been given the news, you have six months, less than a year, the disease has spread, uh, there's no more medical help possible for you. What would you say to someone like this? How, to, how will you encourage a Christian with a report like this to stay in faith? Well, I, I tell them first, come to Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> come, come hang out here, please. Come on, let's pray together. Um, you know, they just need to be in an environment, honestly, to be really practical. If I have a friend that calls me, which we just buried a friend of mine this last week, uh, so uh, who died of uh, terminal disease. Uh, so this is our cycle in life, as we see great miracles and we see people go home, and we, God is God, and we celebrate uh, every everything He does. Uh, but Jesus showed us His standard. Everybody that He prayed for was healed. Everyone who came to Him was healed. And so I can't create another standard, even though even though I may never do it well, I don't have the privilege of changing the standard from what he did. And so what I tell folks, I say, listen, uh, you're, you're in a, a very dangerous situation. You need to surround yourself with people of great faith. Do not be with negative people. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. Uh, things are so fragile in your heart right now. You've got such a battle going on in your mind. Uh, that's where the enemy attacks the most is in our thinking. And if he can get our thinking to be wrong, he can impact our emotions. And there's just this breakdown of the spiritual condition of a person. And it's not necessary. It's just, it's completely not necessary. So I, I tell folks, listen, put yourself in a place of, of great faith. Do your best. I'll tell some people, I'll tell, I've told people before, listen, you don't have to have great faith. I'll have it for you. You just make sure that you maintain hope. You just make sure that you maintain hope. Do your best to be with people that are positive, that are encouraging, and then you do your part 
uh, if you're too sick to read, then listen to the Bible on, uh, you know, on a CD or something. But do something to reinforce your faith. And uh, that's what we tell them. And then we tell them, listen, get prayer every time you get a chance. Until you know it's been accomplished, pray, get prayer. Wow. And so we'll pray for them. And, and they say, you know, I don't feel any change. And so we examine it during the week. And if it's not better by next week, come back and let's pray again. We're, 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 not, we're not in this uh, to pray a couple of times and feel good about ourselves and then move on. No, we're here with people that need a miracle. And, uh, and sometimes it's a Lazarus condition where Jesus heard Lazarus was very sick and he didn't go see him. He waited till he died and then he raised him up. And sometimes that's the situation that we're in, is, is the Lord waits for an appropriate moment. I don't want to be found not praying at that appropriate moment. I've also told people, I said, listen, if you're tired of being prayed for, you know what, you don't ever have to allow anybody to pray for you in person. If that's too exhausting for you, we'll protect you. We'll, we'll make sure that if it's just emotionally draining for you, we are here for you. And, uh, and, we, and we'll just tell them, I said, listen, come back next week. And if you want us to pray for you next week, that's what we'll do. But we just try to keep it in a place where they don't feel the pressure to perform. Mm. They don't feel the pressure to somehow have great faith. I want them to have great faith. But if they're struggling, see, Jesus, Jesus never turned away anyone who had weak faith. Mm. He addressed the weak faith but he never turned them away and withheld a miracle. He would point to their small faith and then do the miracle, which gave them access to greater faith. Once they saw the touch of Jesus on their life, then, then that small faith of theirs suddenly became great faith because they saw Jesus at work. Hallelujah. So Jesus doesn't address small faith to shame us. He just wants us to be aware that as he moves, it's our opportunity to grow in faith. Mm. 